Hi everybody, I'd like to introduce you to my pet Transformer. I shall name him Optimus. <laughs> it's a microwave Transformer. Anyhow, I'm Alex, and welcome to the Renaissance Builder. Okay, okay, tacky intro aside. The reason I have a microwave Transformer here is because a few of the projects happening soon on this channel are going to involve microwave transformers and microwave transformers are actually really fun you can do a lot of things with them a lot of things involving lots of current and little bits of voltage or lots of voltage and little bits of current usually uh, I think on average a microwave transformer is doing about 2,000 volts you put 120 in one side and you get about 2,000 out the other side I think on average I haven't looked at a lot of them but that's what this one does so that's high voltage or you rewind the suckers and then you can do like 1.2 volts or something like that and you get a bunch of amperage out either way they're used to power tesla coils or welders spot welders homemade buzz box welders that kind of stuff so there's lots of things you can do with microwave transformers and we're going to do a few of those and i figured it's a great opportunity if I'm going to be showing you guys how to use microwave transformers that I should probably show you how to harvest the microwave transformers without killing yourself. That probably is a good idea, isn't it? So anyhow, I figured I'd take the opportunity. I have three microwaves out there that I need to take apart, disassemble, and take the parts out of. And I figured I would take the opportunity to take one of them apart for you and show you how to safely remove the items from a microwave because there are some dangerous things in there. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take apart a microwave and I want to show you that it can be done safely and how to do it. So let's get started on that. Whew. That's heavy. All right. So this unit here happens to be a microwave oven. The difference being there is actually a heating element, a resistive heating element inside here that acts just like a normal electric oven does. It's not nearly as powerful because we're still only powered by 110 volts, but the idea was that you could have a small oven and a microwave in the same unit. Now I've had these for a very long time because I thought that at one point I thought I was going to repair them. All three of my microwaves are the same model, well, similar models, and I thought I was going to take parts from one or the other and repair them because I thought they were neat, but, well, that never happened. Anyhow, so now we're going to take them apart and harvest the parts out of them and use the parts for projects. So let's get started. First things first, we don't need any of this stuff. So that looks like that is it for the inside loose parts. Now we're going to move on to taking the shell off. You know, you'd think I'd have my screwdriver ready. I guess here's when I give the warnings. Obviously, and I say obviously even though, you know, hey, warning stickers and all. You want to make sure it's unplugged. Don't take this apart when it's plugged in or energized in any way whatsoever. That's obvious, isn't it? I would hope so. Anyhow, we're going to start by taking the cover itself off. Then we're going to move on to taking the door off. That way it's not swinging in our way. All right, so now that I have most of the screws out here, we're just going to take this one out. And here's the first trick. Even when you think that a panel is going to come off in an obviously simple way, doesn't always mean that that's what's going to happen. So sometimes you just kind of got to be prepared for some weird design that somebody decided to do because they thought they were being smart. Oh, I see. It has to come back. There we go. That's the advantage of taking apart the broken pieces first. You can break things before you finally figure out how it actually needs to be done. Now that we have the panel off this is a very good time there's a 
there's a trick that a lot of people like to say, or a lot of, I'm going to say, backyard mechanics like to say that when you're working on stuff like this, that you should stick one hand in your pocket and only work with one hand so you don't ground yourself. I'm going to tell you, that does not protect you. You need to be careful. And here's what my grandfather taught me. Putting one hand in your pocket is not going to protect you. If an electrical discharge happens, it happens because there are more electrons in one surface than there are in yourself. Therefore, the path will still happen. If you short yourself on something that is hot, it'll still shock you. So putting your hand in your pocket is not going to protect you necessarily. <laughs> not that it's a bad idea. If you want to do that, go for it. But here's what I suggest. Never touch first. Always look at what you are doing. And I say this with enthusiasm because this is what will save you. There are things in here that are dangerous. So always look before you touch and understand what you are touching before you touch it. The case obviously is pretty simple. This happens to have a little motor for a, I guess it's a fan on top is all I can figure there. Ah, yes. So there's a heating element here on top. So it looks like the whole baking apparatus happens here on top we got a fan and we got a heating element that's cool around this side is where the fun stuff happens so i'm going to spin this around and give you a look at what's in here Whew. that's a big puppy time for a better camera angle all right so at this point in the game is when we need to be very careful this and notice i'm pointing with something that's insulated in my hand this is a high voltage transformer. This is a McNasty capacitor. And I say McNasty because this thing's rated for 2000 watts. What? WV? Well, anyhow, it stores a lot of energy. And this thing transforms our input voltage from 120 volts up, upwards of 2000 volts. This capacitor storing the energy, storing that 2000 volts, if this capacitor releases quickly through yourself, this is what kills people. There are stories online of people dying working on microwaves. This is what does the damage, this here capacitor. So that's what you have to be careful with. And I'm going to show you a way of discharging this capacitor that is safe so that you don't have to worry about it. Well, still worry about it, but you should at least be safe with that. All right, so let's get started. First and foremost, it requires taking the capacitor out. Now, mind you, like I said, look before you touch. So we have some high voltage wires going on here. Those high voltage wires are attached to the magnetron that it sits right here. Now, the magnetron is what uses that high voltage to generate the microwaves. So that thing is also incredibly dangerous and it has some nasty stuff in it. So we're not going to play with that. Just don't, don't, don't open these things up. You, you don't want to do that. So what we need to do is we need to disconnect the magnetron wires. We need to disconnect the capacitor and we need to disconnect the high voltage transformer. First, we want to discharge anything that could be left in this capacitor. The trick at this point, I've already removed the bracket from this capacitor so that it's a little easier to show this to you. You can see one lead and the other lead. There's only two on the capacitor. So I have here a, huh, camera views, right? So I have here a three watt, 10,000 ohm resistor. Now the idea of the resistor is it allows the capacitor to discharge slowly instead of all at once. I'm going to use a pair of insulated pliers and I'm going to make sure I'm not grounded and you simply put this resistor in there and short those two wires together. Hold it there for a bit to make sure that the thing is absolutely discharged. Here's an idea for you. Take and make little hooks at the end of it. And you can just wrap it around 
and pull the sucker. There you go. So now you just hold it for a while, giving it time to discharge without throwing any sparks, you know, not letting your eyes. And then you, what you can do is after a while, you can take your voltmeter and see if you get any reading off the sucker. So at this point, we're good. Capacitor's discharged. You don't have to worry about that thing lighting off on you. Now we can proceed to disassemble this the rest of the way. Now you'll notice as far as I go on to disconnect all the rest of the electrical connections, for example this, I'm still going to use the insulated pliers. Now, that, now we can consider that capacitor safe. Now there shouldn't be any further energy stored in the system to catch you off guard. Now we can proceed with disconnecting the rest of it and removing the pieces. There you have it. High voltage transformer. This sucker's heavy. Woo. All right, so here we have it. These are the parts that are not only dangerous, the parts that we're actually interested in, and that they're microwave. Everything else, I'm probably gonna, I'm just gonna junk it. But here we have a capacitor capable of 2,000 volts. At least I'm pretty sure it's capable of 2,000 volts. I'd have to confirm it. It's actually, if I'm reading this right, it's either a 5 microfarad or it's a 0.88 microfarad. I'm, they kind of wrote it a little wonky. But either way, it's a pretty heavy-duty capacitor. You know, I'll probably just use a multimeter and confirm that. Our beefy, crazy beefy transformer. Now, this thing, I tried looking up the part numbers online and I'm not getting anything for it other than the fact that it's a discontinued item and I can't get them. Uh, but if it's anything like the other Transformers, then I can probably figure... Uh, see, Transformers are tricky. I can try using a very low voltage input to get a lower voltage output. Uh, what I might end up doing is I have a multi, I have a, my oscilloscope has a 9,000 volt uh, parameter to it. So I might be able to hook this up to the 9,000 volt parameter and, and actually see if I get something out of it. Uh, I might be able to do that. But primarily for the most part, these, are, these aren't even the high voltage leads. These are actually the low voltage leads. They're high, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, these are low voltage leads, but high current. Figure that one out. I guess that's whatever it is how this works. But anyhow, so I don't have any information as to how much this thing can handle, how many volts it puts out. So I'm just going to have to go through the testing. The difficult part about testing these things safely is that for one, you have to be able to read voltages in the thousands. Your average multimeter cannot read voltages in the thousands. It's only probably only rated for at most 600 if you got a category three or four, then you, if you got a category four, you can go up to a thousand volts that your multimeter is rated for. But that's a special, that's not an average multimeter. Anyhow, and that's the tough part. If I put in lower voltages to get lower pro, uh, secondary voltages, then I risk, uh, this is a large amount of metal that I have to magnetically saturate in order for the transformer to actually work. So lower voltage, lower input voltages will it starts to degrade the performance reliability so I don't get accurate output voltage measurements. So it's tough. It really is. Like I said, I'm probably going to try my 9,000 volt uh, ignition scope on this thing to see if I can't read the voltages. I know on the, on the transformers I was using for the Jacob's Ladder, I can't use the 9,000 because those things are putting out 12,000 volts, whereas this is only supposed to do 2,000 volts. So... I might just actually try to use my ignition scope to see if I can't tell what this thing puts out. But we'll get to that point. So that's the transformer. Thing's crazy beefy. It's the beefiest microwave transformer I've ever actually seen. So whatever that's worth. 
It's a shoot. <laughs> Check this out. It's certainly, get a better view, it's certainly a lot beefier <laughs> than this one by a long shot. Even the gauge of the primary windering is at least twice the size. Anyhow, this is another very unique and something you really do not want to play with. Not only, so this is called a magnetron. This is what actually generates the microwaves. These things, there's stuff going on in here. There's rare metals, there's things that are poisonous and stuff that's just really not good for you going on in these things. So do not, under any circumstance, open these up, dissect them or otherwise mess with them. I highly recommend that these pieces you throw away. Like, take them to a recycle bin. I mean, I don't recommend just throwing them in your trash because, you know, then you got environmental concerns, but definitely dispose of these properly and don't play with them. They can hurt you, like, badly, so just don't do that. As for our video, now you know how to disassemble our microwave safely and not hurt yourself. The key is be very careful around this thing and make sure you are totally discharged of energy before you ever actually start taking anything apart. And don't go sticking your fingers in until you know what you're doing. Key. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully this prepares you for if you want to do any of the future projects where we use these microwave transformers Hopefully this will have prepared you so that you can harvest these things safely yourself. Um, I feel like I should say that I legally am not taking any liability for anything that you guys are doing. What you do is your business, not mine. I'm not telling you to do it. I am simply offering an idea of how to do it safer. So if you go kill yourself, it's not my fault. So that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was informative to you and you can go forward using this information, collect your own microwave transformers so that you can go ahead and do the projects that we're gonna do in the future yourself. Safely, don't hurt yourself. Stay safe guys, I appreciate it. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell icon for future notifications of the videos that are coming up where we use these things as well as feel free to leave any comments for things that you'd like to see or ideas that you have that we could use these things for, because these are beefy. These are seriously beefy. Don't forget to head over to our Patreon page to help support the channel. This is expensive. I am not in any way sponsored by anybody. This all comes out of my own pocket, so anything you guys could do to help, I greatly appreciate, and it just goes towards the videos. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. As always, have a good night. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.